Hello and welcome to YouTube's favorite comic book channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Before we begin today's video, I want to remind everybody about Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July. The second annual Comic Book Christmas in July is coming up the last Saturday of July. We ask our audience to pull out their doubles, their comps, some good comic books, and put them in those local lending libraries. We did it last year and we saw a thousand pictures or more of people doing this. So be sure and take pictures of comics staring out the windows of those little local lending libraries. They're very photogenic, but we know people go there to read, to find something to read. Let's put some comic books in there and uh, let's try to grow some new comic book readers. Also want to remind everybody that we have a cartoonist kayfabe Patreon at the King Kayfaber level. You get access to our videos first, which means you can buy the books that you want before they are sold out or the prices go through the roof. And you sit in and watch us record. So uh, it's always a fun conversation in between these videos with the King K Fabers. We invite you to check out our Patreon and see which level works best for you. All right, Ed. We are looking at today Dark Horse Presents 88 through 91. This is, I think, the second published uh, Hellboy story, yeah. I believe. Yeah. And uh, it's eight page you know, stories. I imagine this may have been conceived for the back of a Monkey Man and O'Brien. No, it was uh, the looking at the all right. Got the drop some two, knowledge uh, of the library edition. Uh, the story is published in color, which is kind of sexy. But uh, he puts a little stuff in the back with each, and uh, the idea for this was to absolutely put this into DHP, with the idea that this is not a fly by night concept for Mike Mignola. He's all in and he wants to show you a cool adventure with, with Hellboy like in that space so that you know waiting for Monkey Man O'Brien anything like that would be too much of a lag. So uh, from the back matter in the library edition I'm assuming that this happens pretty quickly after Seed of Destruction. Yes and some great creative leaps happen which is John Byrne no longer scripting Mike Mignola is now writing and drawing this series. The, the conceit of this episode is Mike Mignola, official cartoonist now. And my definition of cartoonist is that uh, you make comics. You don't draw comics. You don't plot comics. You're, like, you're a maker of comics. You write your story. Draw your story. Uh, stop your ha keyboard hands. I'm not interested in your definition of it. <laughs> uh, that is our definition of what a cartoonist is. He is officially there with uh, the Wolves of St. August. And, and you really start to see the Hellboy emerge because here we are in a tiny village in the Balkans of Eastern Europe and stuff is going wrong. So we're yeah. going to get into their history, but I feel like a lot of Hellboy stories, this is kind of how we go. Like, get your setting established. Now, what's their history of uh, paranormal, any kind of strangeness in their background? Something that we can reference. And uh, that's what we're going to get here as the story unfolds. This video is brought to you by the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. Uh, the King Kayfabers on our Patreon uh, completely mitigate the Kayfabe effect by getting a chance to see all of our videos before anybody else. They also have access to the live stream recording sessions and add a lot of value to the videos by filling in the gaps and uh, the knowledge that Jimmy and I have on the subject matters that we were talking about. Before you lies the bibliography of Cartoonist Kayfabe with some... Uh, Pretty dope new additions that are coming in the near future. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is coming to you this holiday season. 500 plus pages of content. It's the 10 year anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree. It is the 50th anniversary of hip hop. I put 140 pages of new material in this book to make it a completely new and substantial experience. Not the only holiday book that I'm presenting to you this year, 2022. X-Men Grand Design Trilogy is coming out uh, in November in time for the holidays, collecting all of my X-Men Grand Design works. Uh, some of this book, some of this stuff is out of print right now. So it's the one place where you could get it all in a handy dandy volume. And Red Room Crypto Killers is out there. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. Two issues out there right now. I encourage you to get issue number three of Crypt Crypto Killers because uh, that's going to be the first appearance of my next uh, comic strip set of characters. Jimmy has Street Angel Princess of Poverty coming out sooner than later. Jimmy, when's that coming out? Fall. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have not uh, closed it off at the printer yet, so... All right, man. TBD. But it is uh, going to be a great companion piece to Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive that currently has received a, a fresh printing. You get both books. You have all the Jimmy Street Angel material that he has done to date. Uh, but right now, True Crime Funnies is the comic you're going to want to get your hands on. Still has a couple of copies. You go to Jim Rugg's website. Go to his Patreon. You'll be able to uh, see these comics ahead of time and purchase your own copy. Now that we're done with uh, paying the bills, let's get back to the video. 
priest shows up in this little town and uh, the church is in a state of decay. He can't have that. Right. Let's get this town back. Let's let's get them a church that they can respond to. And uh, even another, what I think of as Mike Mignola is these cross cutting. You know, we're having our conversation between the local guy who's like, "You're nuts. It's not going to work. There's some bad bad energy here." And we cross cut to something else in that room. In this case, a bird singing. I always wonder where that comes from because Mignola does that a lot. He and does. I don't see it with other cartoonists, but it's almost like setting details. Big, big researcher. And uh, for this one, dug around until he found an Irish legend about St. Patrick cursing a group of pagans so that every seven years they turn into wolves. The rest of the story cobbled itself together. It's a it's a great piece. This uh, priest is somebody who Hellboy has some history with. Yeah. So we'll get some personal personal issues, Ed. It's how you draw money in wrestling. It's true. Man. It works well in any kind of story. Got to make the gimmick real. And for the library edition, it starts off. You see a little photograph Perfect. with the father in 1961 to establish that they do have some some history because uh, the the first page of this one is a uh, 1994 is the caption. Yeah, set in the present. Yeah. Uh, you know of when this was published. And we see already, man, this is an unholy place. That is not a human skull on top of that on top of that skeleton. Oh no. His work is exceptional to me because it works in this in this black and white. He as makes well as color. he makes black and white saying, man. It's gorgeous. And you know, a hint of that Kirby monster werewolf come into life because I see a lot of Kirby in this story too as we go along. Sure. Hellboy arrives on the scene and they start talking through this. It could be a scene out of the wire as they're trying to decide, like, what could have caused all this. Yeah. Basically, the town gets wiped out. And so they're called into, like, what did this? And also, this town does not want to be a headline for this this stuff. Mike Mignola used to dress like this with the chest <laughs> hair out with, like, the big coat. Like, he, like, I've seen photos of him like that. That's funny. Boy, I love his that, that line that he's using whenever it's not these great spotted blacks. His it, line always uh, always it, stood out to it's me. It's just a rapidograph. It feels very, I hate to use the word sophisticated. You know, it's a dumb line. It like, is. We praise the dumb line that Mazzucchelli brings in around Batman Year it, One. If we wanted to be nice, we could, we call it a deadline. That's fair, too. But I, I do think it has a very outside of the Marvel DC house style. Absolutely. But, but it's employed, like Miller employs it in Sin City. He employs it. And these guys are showing you, listen, they could use these tools. And make viable, perfect, professional comics. Like, gone are the days of how to draw comics the Marvel way. And they're trying to figure this out. You know, there are no obvious clues as to what happened here. But we do get Hellboy talking about this this priest of his that he's buddies with. And he's like, man, I want to get a swing at whatever did this. To me, this is like, okay, you've taken over writing your character, and it is now your character. Right. This is the This is the... I hate to say mature Hellboy because he continues to evolve in a lot of ways, but also like I'm on board at this point. Yeah. You know, that panel, I'm hooked. And his partner sees the St. August almost obscured at the base of the statue and puts together the wolves of St. August. And I will, man, this, what a time. Bob Shrek taking over at Dark Horse Presents editor. And uh, a quickie note on what the rest of an issue like this looks like. Pretty nice artwork here, but one of the King K Fabers. Oh, you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. This guy, though, Gary Davis, not Guy Davis, would always kill me because I liked his art and I would see ads for it and be like, that doesn't look like Guy Davis. And then you look close and go, oh, it's Gary Davis. Yeah, and it's a different guy, but I love this stuff and I don't know his work so much. I don't know I don't that, know he, that he's he done escaped a lot. beyond this. Right. But it's a really attractive style and attractive in black and white. You know, like Dark Horse Presents has gone through quite a few stages and a lot of different artists. Pretty nice one here. Yeah. This is, is our King K Faber, Rob McCallum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with one of the most uh, iconic, in my mind, one of the most iconic like pieces of violence that I totally oh, we'll take swiped. A look. Yeah, we'll take a look at that for sure. So, part two of Wolves of St. August, and we've kind of established an idea now of what's going on here, and that is a centuries-old curse that was put on the family that ruled this, this uh, town. And again, we start to see these these wolves are becoming more of a visual motif. He's just so great. Like the negative space. I mean, this feels like something you would learn in art class whenever it's like, yeah. draw around the shape. I think he is a big, big, big sketchbook guy. And I don't think you get to a style like this of such reduction if you are not practicing a lot behind the scenes. 
Yeah, some of the artist editions have like the early, some early Hellboy art in a, like the original pages reproduced. And you can kind of see him building the figures that are then all in shadow. Totally. They're putting that stuff together. And what's cool is there's so much sketchbook stuff in the back of the library editions. Every single one has, has like tons of good material. I used to buy the first printings of everything. Yeah. And then I would buy the, the uh, trade paperbacks because they would have sketchbooks in the back. And I thought that material was so valuable. Um, I think he's getting better with black and white. You see Hellboy's hand, nothing to obscure that. Like if we're, if he's going to point at something, we're going to see that gesture very, very clearly. Framed well, uh, you know, stacking white on black on white on black on white on black. Ability to do a close up like of a thumb here and it looks good. And it's a Manula, uh, you know, knuckle. Yes. Nobody else would draw that knuckle that way. Get to see his gun. That gun, I think, would go undergo a few more revisions. It's probably not quite at its final stage. I love the way he would do bricks. This would speak to me in that, like, you don't have to rule everything out. That's really cool. Like, like when he draws it, the Balkans. Like, there's there's not one right angle. Like, it's it's uh, just his own hand, and that's the natural way of drawing. Like in your sketchbook and stuff, that's the natural way of drawing all that taping yet down your paper and perspective guides and stuff that's just academia this is also i think his style evolves away from this amount of detail uh-huh but it's still kind of cool to see it and to see that evolution with coming. a ver yeah with a version of uh feathering and stuff and there are bits that like you isolate a piece and you can confuse it with uh, kevin nolan a bit makes sense you know i think there's some overlap with those guys i also love this ability to go in close-ups because i i just that heroes was looking at some some young cartoonist stuff and it's like it's all sort of there but i need some variation mm -hmm. you know I, I don't need it to be literal like like cut away to something interesting do a close-up on a page you know keep those those visuals like moving i wonder if furries can spank to that one <laughs> is Maybe a little too wolf-like yeah. a little too like anthropic for you <laughs> <laughs> maybe wearing the human clothes right. might be a no-no oh i see <laughs> So meets up with his partner, Kate, who had fallen through the floor, and uh, the sun is setting, and Hellboy's like, we're in trouble. Little Mitch O'Connell appearance. I love even, like, the shapes of the birds. Yeah. You know, they're just triangles. It's so, it's been so reduced, but we have to have a window, too, like, just to break up the blackness of that, that border and that side. The use of black on this page, so much more effective, because at this point, they're trapped in the basement of this haunted evil church yeah and it's nighttime yeah. like the black has descended onto them yeah and and look at the this courageous like you and i would be shy about leaving that much negative space but it makes perfect sense it's so gorgeous it's well balanced all right this is the gary love stuff that we were looking at but got to show a little bit of the rob mccallum paleo love by and, gary davis and we talked to uh rob mccallum uh off air a little bit he and Frank Quitely apparently both out of the out of uh, I don't know if they're they they went to the same art school I think okay like, and they were trying to get comics them. work at the yeah. same time because we're gonna see a Frank Quitely story show up in the last chapter so uh, these two I think submitted their stories at about the same time at some comic book show overseas and uh, both came away with some some work this image right here like the before and after of that first off that could make a an great animated gif we, that would we be, need that to happen <laughs> that would be amazing but this image this sequence burned into my mind from a little kid uh, i got this set of uh dark horse presents plus the one with monkey man o'brien on the cover a couple other issues in one of these boxes my dad got at a flea market for like four dollars you know a whole long box but this image i totally uh in in uh the trigger warnings pumpkins issue issue two of trigger warnings there's a part where like the one boy pumpkin he he smacks a dude in the face with a with a baseball bat at the at the top part and so the mandible jaw is like right above the neck and but the head is like so far back i totally cribbed that from rob mccullum it's great I, I love all this great black and whites too on this guy and it is just the most dystopian kind of future <laughs> thing <at> this guy <laughs> that's a really good one too which is like he gets that's he got a little of the treatment with a little blunt dildo head yeah, fun and dark stuff. Like this was, I had never heard of him before. I picked up this Dark Horse Presents for Mike Mignola and was like, wow, that's really impressive. It's cool to, uh, the stuff that's 30 years old and is still kind of in your head. Oh, totally. I mean, it's totally burnt in. And you know what? I never had the last issue, like with the white cover. So, like, so I'll be oh, interested in seeing that. Yeah, it'll be, that, there, there's some fun stuff in there. So here we go. As we establish, things are bad and they're basically like, we got to move. We got to get out of here. Don't argue with me. We got to get the hell out of here now. Yeah. Run. And before they can, 
before they get to the door, they're caught. So eerie. It's so good. Mignola has a way to to get me into his world. And something like this, I feel it. Yeah, the silhouette with the little eyes, too, yeah, for me, really, really works. The eyes are so dead in these creatures. Like, there's just, it's, it's a great detail. And talk about, like, all the black that you're laying down. And then in this page, this panel, it's all white. And just our figures is, is black to really pop. Because it's the, it's the, it's the, the things that I'm learning from comic strips, it really is, like, give your establishing shot. That's all you need. And then just have your characters do what they do. Maybe a little piece of ornamentation around, a little set piece. But you've established the scene. You don't need all of that. Oh, man. It's his uh, his dead fa- uh, priest buddy. Yeah. Great lighting it's, on that it's face. It's bad. It's bad whenever you're seeing this. One of the stories that comes up is uh, this is your patriarchy, the guy who originally got the curse put on him and... and continues to be bound to this area and Hellboy's like you've got a bunch of souls here now yeah you need to release these things when we looked at the first issue of Seed of Destruction uh we made note of a piece that Minula would have refined in the future and you actually point out a refinement on one of the, the earlier pages we looked at today I feel like this would be handled differently by Minula now because it's just so literal it's just mm-hmm. you know tracing off those lines and stuff there's something about that it would be a different composition because this is Minula, but like having the overlap of the little hand shapes that are so similar to the rib cage i think he would have done something different if he was tasked with that sh- piece now yeah i think that's fair you know what does work though is the transition from a little bit of light as we get into the black yeah. and even the word balloon transitions out so now by the time you get to that last panel there's your Mike Mignola of like even the lettering is complimentary to the image. The lettering is great on this strip. Is that is it Nolan? No, it's uh, Pat Bro- Brose. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He does great work. And uh, let's let's do something cool and rip the skin off. That's hard to reveal what's underneath. And this is Hulk Hogan, dude, ripping off his, his tank top here it's got and him right. drooling. It's a Kirby monster has just come into this Hellboy world. Yeah. And guess what? Be careful what you wish for, because here's your chance to take a swing at the guy who right. killed your friend. Yeah. It's so cool, though. Even the mouth is just like your objects of what you're going to put in this, this cropped black panel. Love it. Perfect. Love it. No confusion over that. And speaking of Kirby, man, it calls back to me of like the Thor Kirby's where he's fighting the monsters and it's gods fighting. Yeah. It's here, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> super cool and and what a great way to end it because now you know we just got a schmoz that's right and even the uh covers you know it feels like suddenly we've got one that stands out something's different here pretty striking image that he's holding up like a cross is uh is gonna be his weapon like some badass badass oh yeah a lot of not much information there and what is their screams badass so rejoining our fight is is uh jesus looks on and frank quietly and friend Rob McCallum as your backups in a Mike Mignola book. How thrilled are you if you're a young cartoonist and this is where your work is showing up? Yeah, for sure. But but I don't know that they, you know, they, of course, this is the one chat that Rob McCallum is not in the uh, kayfabe chat room. But uh, Mignola wasn't Mignola, really. Like, he was, he was like the last dude when you're, like, naming the legend creators. Yeah. It would be, like, he would be above, like, maybe Paul Chadwick or something. It's incredible because, like, he really is, like, low guy on the rung in terms of sales curtain jerker and then i mean now he's the headliner out of that group absolutely you know hellboy without a doubt is the book that that is probably best sold out of that group and he feeds people like there there are yes 100 people that that he he makes money this for. is wrestling this is just pure wrestling yeah <laughs> yeah it's big, what he big wants. backdrop right there the beauty of having this like sigil of christianity to swing is all kinds of directional devices, like yes. just just soften the focus of your eyes, and 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 Manula is pointing to you where to read next. How great is the wolf design, like from this angle where it is just a monster head and skull coming at you? Here's a great lesson, people: curves equal motion in drawing. So that thing, that thing is moving. That thing is not. Yeah, pretty good. Moving, how, not. How great is this of just like your mass is coming together? There's just, again, enough information to understand that that wolf has been stabbed. But that's it. Like, we don't need to have all all the clearly drawn lines inside of there. Right. Kind of a funny word balloon, too, the punch or, or sound effect. <laughs> I hope that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cheekiness. Great directional device of the blood coming out. Yeah. It's so simple, too. Like, as a panel, there's nothing there. 
but as a page, it's marvelous. You've got to have the balls to do that, you know? And, and, and Mignola is really lacking that self-consciousness of having a noodle for you. And we see that was an effective treatment. The, uh, the, the religious icon through the heart and our claw turning into bones and just dust. Rest in peace, Doug Wildly. Wildy gets a little, a little eulogy. That's so interesting because we also, uh, Steve Bissett in Tyrant that we looked at recently also calls out Doug Wildy, I think in the back of issue two, his passing. Let's check a look, take a look at that uh, proto uh, quietly. I yes. never had this issue. This is the, uh, look at that, for a beast for that Rob McCallum design. He ain't no it's joke, like a chainsaw man. inside of those jaws. He ain't no joke. Like, it's full Outlaw Comics. Yeah, it's really sharp. And here's our Frank Quitely doing this story called Blackheart. Two writers, uh, two different writers on both of these comics, so I wonder if those are other art school guys that uh, that uh, McCollum and, and frankly uh, uh, Quitely connected with. There's a lot of Quitely style apparent in this, in this story. Yeah. I don't know if this was his first published work. I don't no. think it was, but uh, it feels like... A lot of what we get out of Quietly, you can see here. Yeah, you know what Quietly this is? This is the Quietly that would show up in those Paradox Press, mm -hmm. Big Book of Freaks type books. Yeah, but a lot more of him on the page here than in those books. Those books are pretty restrictive. I like them, but a lot of them are like, they're nine panel grids and oh, it's like yeah. one, two page stories. Yeah, I think his is like a 16 panel story or something. Yeah, not not the... Uh, Look at Flex Metallo. The best two. Uh, right, that's what, that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool, though, to see it, and a lot of value that he's bringing. Oh, yeah. You know, even the if you look closely, it's almost like that weird scribble texture for the uh, hall yeah, sign that's fun. background. That's fun. Great blood, too. I saw some really good blood in a comic recently that I thought about swiping, and I feel like that blood is, is equally... A reflection of the equally cards. Equally up there. So, there it is, man. This is, uh, this is Mignola putting his cross in the sand... And becoming a cartoonist, man, lacking the tether of a scripter, taking on full duties, and he does great work. Yeah, it feels like this is the level up, man. Yeah. At this point, like, I am on board. Yes. Just keep making these, and I'll keep buying them, because it's great comics. Absolutely, man. So so uh, thrilled to look at this thing. So fun to dust off these issues, and to actually get to see what that one, the, 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 the final piece, man. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. Cartoonist K Fabe comic book Christmas in July is coming. Uh, it is the last Saturday in July. We're taking all of our doubles. We're taking our comp copies as as creators. We're stuffing those in the free little lending libraries around our neighborhoods uh, across America. And more than a thousand people participated last year. I'd like 10,000 people to uh, participate this year and spread uh, the good word about comics, help create new comic readers, and give some comics away. This is the real free comic book uh, day. Uh, the videos are brought to you by uh, our Patreon also. Uh, King Kayfaber is on the Patreon. They get first dibs on all the stuff that we talk about way ahead of anybody else uh, by mitigating the Kayfaber effect. Um, kicking it in the chat room with us at this very moment is a couple, three dozen or so uh, King Kayfaber's. And they get to see the things that we're talking about. So, uh, pleasure level of support to the Kayfabe channel that way. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. So, uh, let's get into that, man. Here's the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus. 504 pages of material. Uh, 140 plus pages of stuff that is not in uh, the original four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree. It's coming to you for the holiday season. Uh, so, put in your orders uh, early and uh, as quick as possible with your store or whatever because we just hit the print button and uh, we had to guess how many of you guys are going to grab it but the orders keep flying in. X-Men Grand Design Trilogy is another effort that we're putting out for the holiday season. It's collecting all of my X-Men Grand Design work. About 260 pages of material there and uh, some of those books are out of print so this is going to be the easy place to get to get all of that stuff. Ultimately, the comic I'm working on these days, Red Room Crypto Killers. One and two are on the stands as we speak. Issue three will be out in about four weeks as of this recording, and that's an issue you're going to want to grab whether you like Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit or not, because the backup story is completely divorced from Red Room, and it's going to be the characters that are the focus of 
my my comic strip for the foreseeable future so it'll be their first appearance i have big projects lined up for those characters it's gonna be worth a little something jimmy what do you have True Crime Funnies is my next book. It is out now, self-published, and available at jimrug.com. If you're one of my Patreons, you actually read this as I was completing the story. So you can also join me on patreon.com slash jimrug to see my latest comics and art. Uh, the next book that is releasing is Street Angel Princess of Poverty. This will collect all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel Deadly Girl Live. Both books available from Image Comics. Get them both. They'll look nice on your shelf as a set, and they will have all of the Street Angel comics that I have made so far. You can also pick up Hulk Grand Design and The Plain Janes. Jimmy, tell the people how else they can help the uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe channel along. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, mugs, fanny packs, stickers, more, including our wrestling mask uh, design that just went up this week. Um, that link is also under this video. All great ways to support the channel. Give them those marching orders and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.